Can I? Uh, I yeah, can hold it can, up. Yeah, yeah. That can be the no, official. Just a, oh, you no, got it. it. Guys, <laughs> cool. So, what is this? This is cool. So, so the, you know, the imps are obviously your hands in the world, and kind of they represent you as well. So, yeah. it's, it's like the cursor. And what Cream's doing now is he's just starting a new sculpt. Yep. And just gonna go from there. So, kind of the. The monster's quite round, so it makes sense to start with a spear, spear or like ellipsoid style shape. And we have this awesome feature, which is we call it soft blend. And instead of just placing down hard spheres, we can put down these soft spheres, which lets you kind of uh, block out organic shapes quite easily. Yeah. And you could do that with any shape. So I think right now he's using a box, or maybe a. Oh, no, it's still, it's still an ellipse, which is yeah. very thin. So those are all the different primitives you have, and you can grab any one of them, and then you can sort of stretch them and bend them. So the whole thing feels very much like playing with clay. So it, there's no polygons or vertices to mess with. You just grab the pieces and go, go, go. And again, the soft blend really helps because it, it kind of lets you do these complex organic shapes, but without having to think about, oh, I'm just going to blend this bit in or whatever. And you just you know, the eye stalks are a cylinder. You just grab a cylinder, soft blend it in. Same with the eyeball. You get really nice kind of interesting shapes from that. Yeah, it's looking. Wow, what's <laughs> going on there? <laughs> and uh, obviously, just like you can add the clay, you can also cut the clay away. So in the same way you can do soft adds, you can also do soft subtracts. So you can use that again to make a very nuanced um, cutting pieces. So instead of doing, again, kind of smoothing like our packages, we really just embrace this idea that it's volume-based. And the smoothness is all done using uh, these smoothing operations. And all you really need to learn is how to add clay and then how to take it away. So you start by learning what are my primitives. And you really just need the box and the ellipse. You don't need a lot. The cylinder is also really good. Yeah. Like you saw, I mean, Kareem's been basically just using the cylinder and the... I'm going to uh, find some eyes to put. Yeah, and you know, you don't obviously don't have to sculpt the whole thing. Um, we have a full featured search, so you can go and check out what other people have been making. You can search for eyeballs, or you know, you could just go to other people's... There's like an eyeball collection there. Oh, wow. So one of the cool things in Dreams is you can make these collections that you curate. So maybe you're... In, not interested in sculpting, but you go around the whole Dreamiverse, and since there's so much stuff, part of the, the community role is actually to curate that content and figure out, hey, where, where is the best uh, you know, eyeballs? And where so somebody's made this eyeball collection because they figured, oh, hey, like eyeballs are really useful. So you'll have different kind of collections, tree, collections of trees for forests and things like that. So without even having to do any sculpting, you can just stamp objects on. And yeah. Wing. Bring them on. Oh, yeah. So is that, do you think that's wings? Yeah, I think is that, that is that kind of like wings. Was the intent know. wings? That's cool. Okay, okay. No, we'll work, work with that. I think there's a quite a feathery kind of splat oh, setting, yeah. right? Yeah. So the, the, the kind of unique feature of uh, the dream sculpting is that we have this thing called, we call the splat engine. And it allows us to give a very painterly look onto the clay itself. And right now we just have different presets, but you know it's going to be fully controllable uh, in the future. These are just kind of debug settings. But that way you can you don't just do hard modeling. You also do this kind of painterly look, and uh, that's very good for fur and feathers and things like that. So so Cream's just made this wing and just like any other shape you can place, so you could just clone it. And now you have two wings and you know, flip it around. And then you can publish this creation. You can, you know, people can then use your pieces if you allow it. You, know, you say, hey, you know, I want to publish these wings. These are awesome. So somebody else will find the wings and put them, you know, on their Pegasus or whatever. So the whole thing is about sharing and community. That's kind of why we're here talking to you guys, because you're going to be the big part of it. Obviously, we're going to make content for it, and there's going to be like a game you can play, but. The game is going to be a, a lot about teaching you guys how to use the tools to make your own kind of dreams. So we think that the big push of it is really going to come from the community. Mm, let's put some teeth. Oh, yeah. And 
nice and jaggy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could do the repeater. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah, so we have this crazy repeater tool that lets you just clone objects multiple times. So you can make a whole mouth full of teeth kind of in one go, just. There we go. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy monster. And that <laughs> I think that monster needs a body. Okay. So <laughs> to, to jam a bit with you, we will give it its mechanical body. <laughs> yeah. One of the coolest things uh, about our search is that it's very people focused. So instead of looking for pieces necessarily, you, you can just look at different creators and what they've done. And you can just say, oh, you know, I know that John Beach does really good mix. So we'll just look at you know, what John has done lately, and we'll <laughs> just bring some assets in from him. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> cool. That's it. There you go. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> that was about as fast to do as, as the sketches. Yeah. Yep. That's, uh, the, the, the whole thing was to, uh, to make the tool uh, like uh, uh, we were, uh, Anton was uh, touching on al allowing people to have the same experience that the guys had drawing these pictures and the same kind of fun and also uh, uh, making you go uh, in different directions. The, the mm. thing that uh, happens sometimes in uh, normal digital uh, uh, processes is that uh, you get very precious. After a while, you, uh, you can't... Uh, change things very easily. A traditional game character would take uh, a 3D artist a long time to make, and uh, as a result, uh, and then after that, it takes a long time to prepare it for animation, and another heap of time to uh, make uh, the, 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 the rigging of it. And so change becomes quite a difficult uh, and strenuous process, and yeah. we wanted uh, the, the, the artists and the designs, the people who use Dream to just feel like at any point they can change their mind and have fun with the, with the tools. Maybe Anton can uh, go through some of the spaces that we have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to roll right into the play demo, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so we could show you some of the, <laughs> the different things that we've made just for the show to show you the you know, the kind of creative freedom that you can get by um, jamming on this for a week or so. Yep. Did we, did we connect this controller? Uh, yeah, there we go. Is it yeah, well, what, uh, what Anton will show now is uh, some of the, 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 the reason we've done the project is to... Uh, uh, on, uh, in, in Little Big Planet, we, our approach to uh, making games and making games more accessible was to make it charming, to try to appeal to the nostalgia of uh, your, your childhood like, and, and, and create our sets from felt and cardboard and familiar materials. In Dream, our big inspiration was dreams, making people uh, uh, able to project their own personal touch so yeah. Some of the hardest things in the digital uh, uh, creation is to tell from looking at a, a 3D space. Oops. Uh, is it uh, still going? Yeah. So some of the hardest things to do in, uh, in di uh, or to see in a digital tool is the style of the person, the style of the person that made it. In comic books, for example, you can always have your favorite artist, or in music, you have your f favorite musician just by seeing their unique style. Although they're using the same instrument, a musician could be using a guitar and still have their particular unique style. And in the digital world, in the game world, we, we, we don't really have the equivalent. We've got like styles of a studio and you can see their particular tone of gameplay or their particular uh, humor, but that is uh, more their uh, decision making is what you're seeing rather than the actual style. You can't look at a scene and go, this is so and so who did this scene. While in Dream, uh, our big focus was to make it a bit more like concept art. 
This space that uh, Anton has uh, started uh, uh, with is a wood uh, scene uh, inspired by one of the San Francisco uh, redwood. And uh, John, the artist who made it, uh, made it in uh, a couple of days, I think. And uh, usually a game environment would take much longer than that and lots of uh, tools and texturing and the, the grass system and the water system and the atmospheric system. And it's just like uh, uh, a lot of systems just to get this space going. The time it took him to do this space is faster than a concept artist would need to paint it, just to do one shot or a couple of shots. So the, 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 and also because of the style of the tools that we showed you a very s a quick flavor of uh, doing the monster, uh, you really capture the, the feeling of the, the, the user because of this analog uh, 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 philosophy where we place the objects manually one by one and you, you can really see the touch of the, the, the author's uh, hand. Uh, so personality, personal experience was first key, first point that we, we wanted to uh, achieve. Also in the character designs, like you look at this bear that uh, Anton is uh, using and, uh, to, to walk around the set, and it's uh, 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 using our character uh, design uh, suite, we, uh, we use it to make all the different characters. So he's going to... Uh, 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 this this cricket up there in the balcony is using the same character tools, but it's done by a different artist, and you can see the flavor. I think this one was one of Emily's or one of Maya's, and it uh, has a very different style as well. So we 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 and I I love this uh, sort of angles. It shows you how painterly the 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 thing is. The next thing we, we, we wanted to do is like, what does that mean in terms of game and game worlds, this personality? How can we go from one space to another and have a completely different feeling, a completely different character design style, a whole different look? Using the same tools, you are transported to a, a very different feeling. This uh, sea monster character is uh, one of... Uh, our, uh, uh, I think, uh, who did that one? Maya did that one. And uh, the way Anton is moving it is very different to how you control game characters. Usually in game characters, you have the sticks, the buttons to jump and really run through pre-made animation. What Anton is doing here is using the DS, moving it around and creating all these movements and performances on the fly. There is not one single animation that this character has. This is all Anton's gestures. So again, building on the same uh, uh, analogies of what we do in the making of the assets, we, we took that further in performing with those characters. So you can make a little puppet show or a play using your different characters, and you hit record, and you can make your cutscenes. In a very different way, we always say the time it takes to make a cutscene is the time it takes to watch it. Exactly like the time it takes to play a song is the time it takes to hear it. It's like a performance analogy, not a, a, a very meticulous engineering-oriented uh, tool set. We wanted it always, even if you're not into the creation and you just want to navigate and explore the games that people will make, the act of playing them in their own right is expressive and will be unique to every player. Uh, like when you go to visit a country and you, you navigate, you do go around, uh, do your sightseeing and, and choose how you want to be. Anton now changed from one character to another. And that is a game mechanic that we are intending on exploring and uh, expanding on using just the scale difference between one character and another allows you to go to places that aren't accessible by the big one and so on. But we want to build on that so much more and get to uh, uh, use our audio tools to make you hear the character thoughts when you possess them 
and uh, know their uh, missions and hear their goals. And these are the things that we're going to do next. Now, Anton jumped into a painting, and it's uh, inspired by Cezanne. One of our artists, Men Lou, loves uh, uh, to do his uh, stuff uh, uh, inspired by his favorite artists. And the pair was done by uh, another artist who likes to do cute characters. And uh, the engine that Anton is uh, uh, demoing here, this is a, a good one, really, to, to talk about the engine. Uh, we, we spent uh, a, lo a long time developing uh, the, what we call the painterly engine, which uh, not only looks arty and beautiful, uh, in, our, in, in, in our opinion, it's, it's more uh, in keeping with this uh, messy create a style which allows you to make your shapes and make your uh, 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 pieces of furniture in a way that is much more forgiving. In uh, your normal uh, 3D engines, every mistake is evident. Every little imperfection <laughs> is a problem that needs to be solved. In Dream, we celebrate mistakes. I, I always say that the mistake is uh, a better word for it is a uh, liberation because it allows you to get more courageous and try things that you wouldn't have tried before. So this tool, uh, uh, and it's not done in a sort of filtery post-production kind of way, it's actually there when you're creating using these brushes, different uh, strokes like we uh, showed earlier in the making of the monster uh, head. The other things that we uh, wanted uh, to explore as well as the uh, 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 different uh, uh, moods that you can get from the, 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 the spaces, like that uh, uh, space one we, we will uh, we'll go to. The, the nice thing that we, we, we found, these were our first uh, results of uh, Game Jam we did in uh, the office, where we actually asked everyone to do their uh, favorite set. And we didn't have a, a, a preconceived uh, plan because we wanted to explore the feeling uh, of, of uh, how different and uh, puzzly and surprising it is to go from uh, a wood to a space uh, station. And uh, the, the, that, in its own right, reminds us of dreams. You know, when you're in a dream and you are in a scene from your life and and then suddenly you're completely in a different place. And the explanation why that happened only makes sense to you, only because this is all fragments of your memory and your imagination. And we want to play on that. Uh, some some uh, games like uh, you know, Psychonauts or uh, writers like Neil Gaiman have really explored the, the concept of dreams. And uh, we want to see what the equivalent is in, in our game worlds. This puzzle here is pretty neat. The character is just exploring and... Uh, and the imp can uh, uh, out to get around and uh, move objects around. Yeah, the, 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 the when, when uh, Anton uh, breaks out of the character, you see this little uh, uh, creature that we call the imp. And this is basically your, your 3D presence in the world of dream that you use to uh, uh, this uh, uh, yep. character over there. And it, it sort of is the creative force in the game, so you, it's, it's what also you know, makes all of the dreams. Um, but also it can, has this ability to possess characters, so you can jump from one character to the next. Absolutely. In this case, go into this huge mech that can you know, break down these crates and shove them around. Now this, uh, this uh, mech was done by uh, one of our designers who is really into his uh, mechanical design. And again, you can see the very different style of this level. It's a, more of a traditional uh, game space where you have uh, a shooter or a, 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 a that sort of adventure type game. And uh, this these were the ingredients that we want to leave with you, that Dream is a, a, a place that you can surf between very different uh, styles, very different genres, very different tones and moods of gameplay. And they're all done 100% using the PlayStation controllers and the PlayStation powers. So it's a 
very exciting for us to be able to give you a glimpse. And uh, in the next uh, rounds, we'll be showing more gameplay, more music, and more exciting things. Thank you. Yep. All right, everybody, join me in giving them a big hand. That was an impressive demo. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, we're going we're gonna to move a little further right here. Let's just move this out a little bit. Perfect. Yep. Grab a seat. <laughs>